Hello, everyone, and welcome to our podcast. Today, we have a legendary preeminent leader in the Global Reset, Rod Steele. He's been in the community for quite some time, and he's been gracious enough to join us back for a second round on the discussion of the Reset. Now, before we get started, if uh, you're interested and you're enjoying the channel, please do like, subscribe, and share. It does help us grow the community accordingly. Rod, thank you for being back on our second round on the podcast. Hey there. <laughs> so, so Rod, I wonder if you'd do me a favor and indulge those who don't know you for some reason uh, on top, kind of your overall background as it relates to finances and what you've okay. learned during this process. Oh, gracious. Okay. BBA in marketing and management, uh, master's in management and finance. Uh, started out as a executive recruiter for the banking industry. I took middle and executive level bankers from all over the United States and brought them to Dallas. Um, Deviled in real estate for a while. The problem was the banks froze hiring at a period of time and that kind of put me out of business. So uh, I tried the real estate and then, and then my dad actually came down with the same thing I've got right now. And um, his didn't turn out so well because it, it, for it went too far too quick and, and, and we didn't have the results that we were hoping for. But uh, I expect mine to be different. Anyway, that led me back to Fort Worth and Dallas, which in which I got into the insurance industry uh, 1986. I got all my securities licenses in 1987, uh, went to district manager, regional, regional vice president, executive vice president, and opened up my own firm. And uh, so, I, and that was when I was, you know, blessed to meet the right people across the country that were involved in what we now refer to as the prosperity programs, uh, which are no longer active. Uh, but we do expect those to be paid out at the same time the currencies are, along with farm claims, uh, the Native Americans uh, that got screwed. Uh, all those claims, that, such as CMKX, the stock fund, the diamond company, all that's supposed to be paid originally prior to the currencies going out. Now it looks like it's just going to be one big shotgun thing and we get all of it at the same time. And so uh, that that's 35 years in a nutshell. <laughs> 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 that's a nice that's a nice robust summation thank you for that rod um so on our last show that we talked last month if i remember correctly you were saying that you felt pretty strongly that there was a possibility of this happening in november because we we here as you know we're not big on dates and rates but kind of puzzle pieces but i believe <laughs> if i remember right you said that if it wasn't november we're definitely looking at january do you still kind of have that same sentiment well, there are people that are saying early January, uh, and and yet there are other also who are saying right now, and we can get into that and explain why. Part of it has been the constant barrage on uh, Iraq by Iran on our American bases and our embassy. Uh, that did definitely have a negative effect. Uh, however, uh, we are at a point financially, not only in Iraq, because they've stopped all the U.S. dollars from flowing over there, except for the legal entities that have to have them, uh, the import-export businesses and things like that. Uh, we are now, our U.S. Treasury is in control of monitoring their banks for what they do with our dollars. Uh, so there's, there's no dollars being bled off to Iran anymore. And that means uh, Iraq is basically functioning without a viable currency. And you know how long can you do that? Um, so we can go into more detail on why I think it could be sooner than later. Um, but I, I think we're looking at somewhere between now and no later than the 20th uh, for that reason. We need 10 days for us to get in there before the 1st of January. And this stuff is all supposed to roll out to the rest of the world uh, in early January. And so in order for that to happen, we need to be done with our part. Uh, could it be that late? Yes. Could they stall? I'm sure they'll find some excuse if they do. But because of other factors I'm aware of that we can talk about uh, in, the, in the converse, uh, uh -huh. I don't think so. I don't think so. Okay. Fair enough. Thank you for that. Um, interesting little sidebar kind of getting into Iraq, which I know is one of your fortes. It looks like uh, Speaker Halabasi that they replaced recently and they're kind of between interim speakers they're delaying that i guess they're having some type of elections or the general elections i believe somewhere you mentioned the date of the 20th i think that's when the elections are supposed to happen is that your understanding as well elections are on the 18th 18th and, okay uh, so and then the 20th relates to the dispersal of the iraqi budget 
And right. so, uh, that budget has to be funded or they can't. <laughs> In other words, they've right. dreamed up a system to accomplish all this stuff and they don't have any currency to accomplish it with. Mm -hmm. And so with, without a revaluation, that budget is worthless. Uh, and yet, I was going to mention that at the tail end. Uh, I, I'm going to try to keep up with you. But um, anyway, they've got five days or six days, actually, uh, at the end of the month to do their audit in Iraq for the uh, budget, which means they're going to release it on the 20th. And that gives them five days to spend the money. And that pays off the agencies, that pays off all the government salaries, and all of that has to be done in a five-day period. And then they do a six-day audit at the end of December going into January 1st, in which everything's supposed to be zeroed out and started over again fresh. And so they've done a lot in the last two months, and I don't think our government could work that fast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, really, that's true. Well, at this point, Rod, I'll just kind of, you know, I know you have a lot of information that you're able to share. So I'm just going to kind of turn it over to you to whatever you want to share as far as what you've been privy to. Okay, guys. Well, uh, let's review a little bit of where we've been at. And, and I'm sure I'll step over some of this again. But uh, the HCL is a lot of question. That's the hydrocarbon law. People question that as to what's going on. Is that going to be a factor? Uh, it looks like now that's going to be completed after the um, RV. And as you mentioned, we do have the election coming up on the 18th. Um, info comes out of Kurdistan first. So when you first hear things happening over in Iraq, you think it's all of Iraq. It's usually not. It's usually Kurdistan. Um, so, and then it bleeds into Baghdad a few days later. Um, if, and so Wells Fargo now is announcing multi-currency accounts for business. Uh, some people think that's a, a thing that they need to be involved in. Uh, it's probably not, but it, they are going to make it available. Uh, however, um, and they will have one, they'll have multi-currency accounts for individuals after the RV. The business accounts are available now with the uh, multi-currency uh, account opening. Uh, it, one thing people may not be expecting, U.S. dollars only will be used to put in those accounts into the foreign currencies. So I think once again, we got people, you know, pulling at straws and, and wondering about things and worrying about things that they don't need to be wondering or worrying about. If this is a lot simpler process than what a lot of folks are trying to make it. And if I can help calm them down and realize it's really simple, folks, it's just a lot of numbers, but it's just digits on the screen. And granted, it'll change your whole life, but it's the same process as when you fly back in from Europe and you exchange your euros for US dollars and you get your dollars and you go home. That's pretty much all there is to this. Uh, you know, um, the rate update from the different banks uh, we've been seeing anywhere from like almost a dollar difference 381 to 481 45 455 was in there pending for a while uh, some people ask me about POAs most uh, power of attorneys for your senior family members uh, and that is a thing I've, I've worked with that myself a lot usually you can go get a POA form from your local business store, you know, that sells business supplies, uh, and that'll suffice. However, I did hear from Chase that they did confirm they want you to use their POA and nobody else's. Uh, so if you're going to use Chase and you have that situation, be aware. Um, the completed packages have now been sent to the IMF uh, to be released. And it went through all the other channels prior to that. I could go into those details if I needed to, but the bottom line is it's at the IMF. Uh, they got so over the weekend, they had a lot of additional signatures. And so um, we don't know the latest detail as to why they're, they're holding it, but um, they are. And so that's where we're at. The U.S. is out of it at this point. Uh, Iraq is telling their people on TV that they are sovereign. Uh, they, must, they must have a new rate in order to go into uh, the new year. And so uh, it's got to be done soon. Uh, looks like they talked about on the street in Iraq coming out between 481 to 521, perhaps. Um, this thing has been trying to go all last week. Um, the bombs interfered. Um, there's been meetings going on consistently. Um, 
Iraq just had their Victory Day celebration on December 10th. Uh, that was like our independence. So they kind of took time off for that. Um, and banks have started calling people in uh, that they have relationships with. Um, the, they're saying that the interest rate varies and can go up. One bank said for every 6 million you have, the interest rate can go up. Uh, I thought that was an interesting tidbit. Um, by, but depending on the amount that you hold, uh, there, there will be offering uh, debit cards with a limit that will be available so that you don't have to use your mother load out of the QFS. Um, and I'm going to leave some of that for later. Uh, elections, as I said, we talked about that on the 18th. We're, I'm going to jump down over this, that Iraq is saying that they're running ads every half hour showing that the banks are bringing people into the bank and they're showing them the new lower denominations and what to expect and how that will work. Um, and so yeah, every half hour, that's a lot. So I, I think they're getting their message across. Uh, Treasury is saying that we are done. Oil is now at $73 a barrel today, but that's still within the budget range. Um, the banks are just sitting there looking at their screens, waiting for a release. Um, this thing could be any bit, it, nobody knows. I, ABC agencies are saying that it could be tonight or tomorrow. Um, we did have some ABC agency people involved in the process that are getting paid right now. Um, they're higher on the totem pole than we are, folks, so, so don't be upset. Um, we talked about the 20th that uh, they are releasing, the Iraq is at least releasing the budget and giving five days for them to spend the money. That uh, So by the 25th, they have to have had that money spent by the agencies and the individual salaries that those people were going to. Um, you got to have the new rate in order to pay off all that stuff. Our government contractors over there are seeing the new rate they're getting paid as Americans on their card. They're just not able to access it yet. Uh, our government shuts down on the 15th. Uh, it's supposed to be on trading on Forex sometime today, I was actually told. Um, Iraq dinars exchange rate today is no longer 1300, but currently at 1100. So that adjustment has been made. And uh, like I said, it's the market people that I'm in touch with that are expecting to see the new rate on Forex as early as tonight. And so uh, that's that's right up to the minute from this morning. Okay, thanks for that. Thanks for the details on that, Rod. A couple of follow-up questions I wanted to, uh, to ask you from the information you shared, because you touched on it. With respect to the HCL law, uh, we're still waiting for Macron to make his you know entrance into Iraq as well as uh, um, Erdogan, who has to sign off. I believe personally that they're going to do this digitally, right, on a, on a gold-backed dinar, you know, at, whether it's now or in the near future. Uh, so they don't technically need to go through all these steps, but since they're doing it, they're going to do it anyway. What What do you suppose is the holdup of getting Erdogan to Iraq to uh, to get this signed off? You know, that's a complicated question because technically the U.S. says they're out of it. Um, and yet, I do know the server that releases the uh, revaluation is based in Houston, as per President George Bush Sr. So I don't know that we're ever completely out of it. Uh, but the process was supposed to be going from 1300 to 1100, which were at, which technically was supposed to go to 1000 right. and then go to one to one, which doesn't affect our rate here in the States. But that's what they're looking for over there. And so are they going to waste more time going from 1100 to 1000 and then going to one to one again? It's possible that that was the plan that I was told 90 days ago. And it seems to take them forever to get to each step. Yeah. Uh, and, and, you know, and, and usually I'll say our guys are jumping the gun over here on this end because they get their, the banks get their information from the Treasury Department. And of course, I get information from Treasury and from ABC groups, and they're usually ahead of the game too. But the fact that our guys are getting paid now, uh, that's that's huge. So if they're going to do this thing 
I think they're going to do it fairly quickly. I mean, we could see postponement till early January. That is possible. I, I know they even asked for that, actually, uh, saying it would be easier for them to start over on the books if they waited till January. But um, I just don't, it mathematically, it doesn't make sense. They, they, they've got to get this part of the budget taken care of, which they're working on right now to get done before they start the new year. We've got about 10 days we need to process the majority of us through before they go public with everything. And so I just don't see how they can keep, you know, postponing. I, I don't get it. Okay, fair enough. Uh, the other one, the other question I'd ask you, Rod, is historical replication, as you know, being in this a while, suggests that uh, typically we'd have about 90 days to exchange. Some people are concerned they're going to have to rush and do this overnight, which to try to quell some of that. Can you kind of put your touch points on what you think, how much time people will have to exchange? You'll you'll have plenty of time. I mean, it'll be available for at least 90 or more, you know, possibly a whole year. Uh, huh. What you get based on the longer you wait may not be the same, which might be an opportunity for me to mention, and, and I dare I do it because I got so many to get back to now, but I had uh, offered, uh, have offered to do private consulting with individuals on the actual appointment of the redemption process itself, uh, the rates they could look for and negotiate for, and uh, the length of time that those might be available and so forth. And so timing could be of some importance on some of those, not all. But uh, if that's something that would benefit individuals and they would like to DM me on my X account at Patriot Rod Steele with no E on the end, um, get in touch with me. It will be a minute before I get back to you. But I've got a lot of other folks in front of you I need to follow up with. But I will get it done. And uh, we just, if they want to do that, then I'll be happy to respond and uh, we'll get an appointment set up for them. Okay, thank you for that. Um, one of the other interesting touch points too, Rod, I noticed in, in kind of watching this sort of story that's been protracted unfold is as Sudani is really stepping up and doing what he said he was going to do and keeping his promises step by step, uh, the more they talk about tax reforms and taxes and tariffs on the border and all that kind of stuff leading and precipitating up to the HCL, it's really inflaming Maliki and the uh, Iranian militias that you were referring to earlier, the Iranians uh, trying to, you know, put a cog in the wheel or a wrench in the plan. Uh, what kind of effect might that have on things? Would our military have to step in maybe and remove them? How do you, how do you see that playing out? Yeah, well, they've actually addressed it already. You know, we, we our bases got hit, our American bases within Iraq got hit 10, uh, by 10 rockets uh, last week. They hit the American embassy. That really ticked us off. And basically, we came back and said, OK, we're not going to start World War III over this, but we are going to react in kind. And so uh, everybody wants this done. No, nobody, well, everybody except Iran wants it done. And right. I think at this point, they're just stupid because what they wanted was the American dollar bleed off from Iraq and the crooked guys they had in parliament there and mm -hmm. the banks and the right. crooked guys in, in the Iraq parliament owned the banks. Well, now we're monitoring those banks. And so they're, they're not getting away with anything anymore. So to keep hitting us when there's no benefit to them, you know, what kind of stupid are you? <laughs> You know, and and we've already said, you know, whatever you do to us, you're going to get back an equal kind. And so uh, I don't see it preventing this long term, but it has slowed it down temporarily. OK, fair enough. Uh, just as a, a, a temporary sidebar for a minute, um, just to touch on Zimbabwe real quick, because because I get this question actually more frequently than you might imagine. Obviously, a lot of people are tracking with the Zim bonds and all that. But uh, one subject that has come up, interestingly enough, is uh, the agro checks. And we know that they're a thing. Um, again, no need to get into rates or anything like that. But can you maybe just touch briefly on the subsidiveness of the agro checks? That, you know, what kind of value? Do they have a value? Uh, what are they based on? Just to kind of give people a little bit of an educational knowledge on them. Yeah, my only information on the AgriChecks comes from bankers that recommended that it be considered. Uh, mm -hmm. I actually don't have it because I, I think there's better options. But if you know you like diversification, then that's certainly a viable one. 
Um, my understanding is it won't pay quite as high as the actual currency will, but um, nonetheless, it will be much higher than what you pay for it. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I understand it is, it is absolutely viable. It is uh, going to be accepted and, and you will be well compensated. Fair enough. Fair enough. Uh, again, on sort of a, an outlier issue, but everything is kind of, as you know, correlates. Today, uh, we reported on our Telegram channel that Javier Malay, the president of, of Argentina, just devalued their currency by 50% and is tying that to the dollar. And you and I were talking about that offline. You had an interesting sort of musing on that. I wonder if you might share that with our audience, what you determined from that. Well, yeah, uh, I mean, we all, I guess, hope have similar values and, and uh, understand what's going on with the leadership over there has been in, in Argentina. Um, it's not exactly your first choice to, to have as an ally, but um, the, the fact is, um, without trying to be too political, our current administration has basically screwed every relationship that Trump had, had established with the rest of our allies around the world, and he even made allies out of people that were enemies. And uh, so, yeah, then uh, the, the man upstairs in that office has now managed to reverse just about every one of those relationships. And nobody wants to do business with us. Nobody wants our petrodollar. Nobody wants our U.S. Treasury bonds. And they are all flying in faster than we can possibly count them. And uh, speaking of devaluing, that's exactly what's going to happen to our bonds, and which is only going to jack inflation through the ceiling. So, yeah, we're fixing to be in for an economic time that's going to be like none we've seen probably before. But uh, and that's why you're here folks is because you will have alternatives. A lot of people may not have access to that. But the point was, uh, we need oil and nobody wants to sell it to us. And so uh, actually we've, we've got tons of it, but we don't want to use our own for some reason. I, I, I was actually told the plan was use everybody else's oil and when they run out, we'll use our own. <laughs> but um, anyway, Venezuela is one of the only ones that Biden's making an agreement with to sell us their oil. And so uh, now we're in bed with Venezuela. Whoopee! I'm thrilled. <laughs> you know? Well, fortunately, the boulevard is going to make a nice comeback since everybody always talks about it. So there is a silver lining to all that for sure. It, it, is, um, it is going to. It is a, it is a good rate. You're, you're going to make money on it. Yeah, absolutely. Especially the newer notes. Uh, what other, any other updates or anything you'd like to share or anything that's come out recently? Oh, wow. I, I just gave you as late as this morning. Uh, and some of them <laughs> are expecting tonight as far as uh, Forex is concerned. We'll see. I've, I've, we've heard these projections before. But um, another thing, if people, you, those that do feel like it would be of value to get in touch with me personally, if they want to... Uh, have a, a list of questions that they could ponder to ask the banker when they go in. Uh, if And uh, for those that do have the various bonds, I actually do have a list of those that are going to currently be accepted. And if that's something I can send if you decide to have an appointment with me. And so sometimes people feel like that that's beneficial. But other than that, I think we're all caught up. Yeah, sounds great. Well, thanks again for being with us on the program, Rod. I pray that you and your family have a wonderful Christmas and a happy new year. Certainly much for us to anticipate and look forward to. And we, we do appreciate your knowledge base and your time. You too, John. It's always a pleasure. Thank you so much for having me. And uh, the same God blessings to you and your family and to all of our listeners. Thank you, sir. We'll see you soon.